Chloe kept a young lover on the side. He kept demanding a proper status. To appease him, Chloe gave him the role I fought so hard to secure. She was confident I wouldn't divorce her. During the press conference for the new drama, she even boldly wore matching couple rings with him. In front of a live audience of thousands and countless media cameras focused on me, waiting to see me humiliated. But I calmly pulled out the divorce papers. Chloe slammed the table on the spot, sabotaging all my brand collaborations. She even declared that within a month, I would be begging for reconciliation. Yet later, on a stormy night, she was the one who drove recklessly through the rain, soaked to the skin, standing at my door begging for forgiveness. But a woman who had just returned to the country stopped her at the door, smiling lightly. Ex-wife, don't bother calling. He's too tired to hear you. Chapter 1. When the male lead for the movie Daylight was announced, my studio was in chaos. What's going on? They changed the actor without a word. Why didn't anyone inform us beforehand? We cleared the next three months for this shoot. Ava, my manager, Ava, dialed the production team with a grim expression, only to be brushed off with a few words. Why don't you have Matthew call Chloe and ask her himself? Chloe was the largest investor in daylight and also my wife. Everyone in the studio immediately turned their gaze to me, urging me silently. I lowered my head and looked at the name of the new lead actor, feeling a sinking sensation in my heart. Anthony. Rumor had it that he was the young lover Chloe kept outside. Until now, I hadn't taken it too seriously. Despite our long marriage, even if Chloe didn't hold me in her heart, she never did anything this outrageous so openly. But this time, to appease the young lover demanding recognition, Chloe handed over the lead role I had fought so hard to get. She knew exactly how important this role was to me. Chapter 2. I called three times, but no one answered. Ava patted my shoulder and tried to comfort me. Go home and ask her properly. You sacrificed so much to get this role. There's no need to lose it out of spite. But that night, Chloe didn't come home. I sat on the couch, waiting from dusk until dawn before Chloe finally returned. She glanced at me lightly, with no intention of explaining herself. I finished the last sip of my tea and looked up at her. Why did you replace me? Because I felt like it. Chloe replied nonchalantly. Then she tilted her head and smiled at me. What? Are you upset? Chloe always knew how to infuriate me with her indifference. She walked over, bent down slightly to look at me, her eyes filled with mockery, and asked curiously, does the great actor Matthew, who can get anything he wants on his own, really care about a mere lead role? The sarcasm in her words was unmistakable. Chloe once grabbed me by the collar and told me, Matthew, as long as you please me, I can put you in any position you desire. Now, she was showing me through her actions how wrong I was to reject her back then. In the past, I would have been too lazy to argue with Chloe, but this time was different. Daylight meant too much to me. It held all the beautiful memories of me and that person. Ava's words echoed in my mind, and I suppressed the emotion surging up within me, speaking softly. I spent months preparing for this role, I know. Chloe interrupted me casually. My eyebrows twitched as I looked up at her. You want this role back? What can you do? Chloe lowered her eyes to me, laughing softly. But I don't want to give it to you. Chapter 3. The conversation ended on a sour note. Ava approached me more than once and I lay on the couch in silence for a while before speaking. My voice hoarse. It's not out of spite. Chloe knows how much I care. She's doing it on purpose. Ava's words abruptly stopped. She looked up at me, and after a long silence, she whispered, What kind of marriage is this? Yes. What kind of marriage is this? It was a marriage of convenience from the start. Chloe was a princess of the capital, with status and wealth. Everyone thought I was shamelessly clinging to power, but no one knew that Chloe was the one who promised to love me, word by word. Before I could agree, the Wang family had already nodded their approval and sent me to Chloe's side. But gradually, Chloe began to take her frustrations out on me. When she was drunk, she would touch my face and repeatedly ask, Matthew, am I really that unworthy of your love? Without me, would the Wang family be where it is today? Pleasing me, isn't that what your Wang family does best? She loved to look down on me in my moments of despair, as if she were pitying and redeeming me. She would softly coax, beg me, Matthew. She knew I would never beg, and she was certain that I wouldn't ask for a divorce because of the Wong family, so she humiliated me again and again, watching me lose face in front of everyone. Chapter 4. Chloe made an offer. If I could stand at the entrance of the banquet with her favorite cake and wait to take her home the day after tomorrow, she would return the role to me. Ava's expression darkened. The day after tomorrow, all the big names in the industry will be there. Making you stand at the door, this is just humiliating you. Even if she wants to give the role to Anthony. She doesn't have to treat you like this. Ava advised me to let go of the role, but I still agreed. Is this movie really that important to you? I nodded slightly. Yes, very important. Unfortunately, it rained heavily that day, 
I stood at the entrance of the banquet, holding an umbrella. Eyes constantly fell on me, and whispers filled the air. I heard he's doing this to please Chloe. Why act all high and mighty in the first place? No background. No connections. Of course he has to resort to these low tactics. So embarrassing, but what a pity. I said nothing. Watching the rainwater form a line and drip off the edge of the umbrella. It wasn't until midnight that I realized what they meant by pity. Chloe never came to the banquet. I was soaked to the bone. The laughing stock of the event. My fingers trembled with cold. Chloe didn't answer her phone, but I received a text from an unknown number. I heard you waited all night. So sorry. Chloe flew to S City to celebrate my birthday. Attached was a photo of an exquisite birthday cake. I stared coldly at it for a few seconds. Then tossed the cake aside and walked away. Chapter 5 Chloe never returned my calls but did update her social media. It was quickly deleted. But someone still managed to screenshot it. In the romantic setting of a Ferris wheel, the reflection in the glass vaguely showed two people kissing. Ava was furious, cursing Chloe as a monster. News travels fast in this industry, and I became a joke everyone laughed about. Even so, I still didn't get the roll back. Chloe looked at me, her eyes crinkling with laughter. Matthew, even if you had gone, I wouldn't have necessarily given the roll back to you. After all, I never promised. Her tone was as indifferent as ever. A chill ran through me, and I looked at her coldly. Perhaps my enraged expression amused Chloe, as she covered her mouth, laughing even harder. Matthew, it's been a long time since I've seen you like this, but this role has been decided, and it can't be changed, but I won't make you wait in vain either. How about this? She leaned closer, her voice tinged with amusement. From now on, you can pick any script you want, Chloe. I suddenly interrupted her. I looked up and met her eyes for a few seconds. Calmly, I said, let's get a divorce. Chloe's smile froze on her lips. Her gaze turned probing as she looked at me. Didn't anyone ever tell you? She lifted a hand, her finger tracing my cheek. Some jokes aren't meant to be taken lightly. Hmm? The Project Wong family is negotiating right now. I could destroy it with just one word. As if to confirm her words, a message from the Wong family popped up on my phone. I turned my head away. There was no need to read it. I already knew it would be about how to please Chloe. Chloe lowered her eyes, her smile returning. She spoke softly, but with absolute certainty. Matthew. You can't live without me. Chapter 6. After that day, Chloe indulged Anthony even more. Almost as if in revenge. Anything he wanted, Chloe would give him. Anthony's texts came through from time to time. Chloe gave me a limited edition watch. I heard it's the one you've always wanted. Take a look. Thanks to you. Otherwise I wouldn't have met such a wonderful Chloe. Oh, by the way, don't wait for her. I'm taking Chloe to watch the fireworks. The numbers changed one after another, but I could never block them all. The better Chloe treated Anthony. The more the comments about me online multiplied, the rumors spread like wildfire. Thank God. Matthew finally ruined himself. What does a marriage of convenience matter? True love wins. Right. Hey, Matthew. When are you going to step aside for our beloved Anthony? Divorce. As if he could bear to. Everyone assumed I wouldn't dare to divorce her. So did Chloe. She grabbed my phone, staring at the comments for a few seconds before looking up at me with a smile. So you do care. Then why can't you just ask me? She leaned in closer her alcohol-laden breath brushing my ear. Matthew, beg me, say the words I want to hear. Whatever Anthony has, I can give you too. I looked at her quietly. That night when I mentioned divorce, Chloe didn't take it seriously at all. In this game, Chloe was always pulling the strings from behind the scenes. She understood better than anyone how much public opinion could affect me. But she wanted to see me humiliated, to see me isolated, to see me beg her. But I wouldn't. I pushed Chloe away. Don't come any closer. You're filthy. Chloe stood there. Stunned, her face turning pale. Chapter 7. When the Wong family called again, I finally made a trip back to see them. As I pushed open the door, the room was filled with people. When they saw me, their expressions were anything but welcoming. It was clear they were unhappy with Anthony's emergence. My father, Daniel Wong, spoke up, scolding me. How can you fail at something as simple as pleasing Chloe? Have you seen what's being said about us online now? I let out a cold laugh. You're aware of what the online chatter says about the Wong family aren't you? Daniel's face darkened. Regardless, we can't lose this project. You can't afford to mess things up with Chloe. I nodded. The project won't be lost, but this will be the last time. Daniel's momentary relief vanished. What do you mean, the last time? The Wong family has gained plenty over the years. It's time you learn to stand on your own. This project will be my final act of endurance. Once it's done, I'll divorce Chloe. Before I could finish, Daniel's slap came without hesitation. What do you think you are? Without the Wong family. Would you have what you do today? I turned my head, feeling the sharp sting spreading across my face, but I didn't respond, instead turning to look Daniel straight in the eye. 
Coldly finishing my sentence, the future Matthew will have nothing to do with the Wong family. Whatever they said after that, I didn't listen, nor did I care to. The Wong family raised me all these years, but once the project is over, we're square. After years of muddling through, I could finally see the end. As I walked out, I looked up at the sky. The sunlight was blinding, burning my eyes. For a long time, the sound of a new message on my phone pulled me back to reality. News about Charlotte Lin, the heir of the Lin family, was trending. Charlotte. I stared at the name, momentarily lost in a whirlpool of memories. Chapter 8. That night, I had a dream. In the dream, it was a quiet and warm afternoon. I finished the last page of a book and looked up, waving to the girl standing in the sunlight. When I become an actor, I want to play the male lead in this book. The girl smiled with her eyes and asked why. I looked up and told her. I like this story. The male and female leads will always be together. The girl chuckled. But outside the story, we will be too. I'll watch as our Matthew becomes a great actor and plays the lead in this book. But later, I was the one who pushed her away with my own hands. On a rainy day, she clutched the umbrella handle, smiling mockingly. Yes, the female lead was never me. I woke up with a start, my forehead covered in a fine sweat. The pitch black room felt like a suffocating web wrapping tightly around me, making it hard to breathe. Chapter 9 The day the Wong family's project was finalized coincided with Chloe's company's new product launch. The event was more bustling than ever, because the rumor that Chloe would bring Anthony along had leaked. Several media outlets, drawn by the scent of high society gossip, rushed to the scene. Before I left, Ava tugged at my sleeve. Do you really have to go? In a formal setting like this, if Chloe really brought Anthony, it would be a deliberate attempt to humiliate me. Going there would be walking right into the trap. I nodded. Ava opened her mouth to say something more. But the next second, her expression turned extremely grim. I glanced down at her screen. In the live broadcast of the event, Chloe had indeed brought Anthony along. They stood together, their outfits carefully coordinated. The media, always eager for drama, zoomed in on the matching couple rings they both wore. The media frenzy erupted. The live stream chat exploded. Chloe really brought him. Couple rings. This is too much. Does she really think Matthew won't ask for a divorce? There's no way he'll divorce her. Especially considering the Wong family. I stopped watching and went straight to find Chloe. As soon as I arrived at the scene, many eyes immediately turned towards me, filled with the anticipation of a good show. Anthony smiled and began to explain. Don't get the wrong idea. I insisted on buying matching rings with Chloe. Well, I said coldly, I believe that's the ring Chloe bought for me, which I refused. You can wear it if you like. Anthony's face instantly paled. Chloe looked over at me, a bit surprised. Her voice lowered. What? You finally decided to come find me? I nodded. Yes, I have something to discuss with you. She suddenly smiled. Matthew, I told you, you can't live without me. But coming to beg me now, isn't it a bit late? The moment Anthony appeared, I was destined to be the laughingstock of the entire city. This was exactly what Chloe wanted to see. Humiliating me was her usual tactic. Chloe's voice was loud enough for everyone to hear. As she spoke, the gazes on me became even more contemptuous. Matthew really came to beg her. I actually want to see what he'll say. These words reached both Chloe's and my ears, making her smile even wider. She adjusted her posture, ready and waiting for me to speak. I looked at her calmly, and under everyone's gaze, I pulled out the divorce papers. It's not too late. I handed her a pen. Just sign it if you agree. Chloe looked at me, still smiling, but the moment her eyes landed on the divorce papers, her smile froze. The lively atmosphere suddenly turned cold. The room fell into silence. What do you mean? Weren't you here to apologize? Chloe gritted her teeth, speaking each word slowly. Matthew, do you really dare to divorce me? Chapter 10 It was rare to see Chloe like this. She stared at the divorce papers for a long time before letting out a laugh, more out of anger than amusement. Do you really think your family's only project with the Shin family is this one? I'll give you some time to reconsider. Chloe placed the divorce papers back in my hands. Matthew, if you take this back now, I can pretend none of this ever happened. No need to think about it, I said, my voice cold as I looked at her. Just sign. Chloe was certain that I wouldn't leave her for the sake of the Wong family. I was equally certain that someone as concerned with appearances as Chloe wouldn't refuse to sign in front of everyone. The whispers around us started to grow. More and more cameras were pointed at Chloe. This kind of gossip was tantalizing to everyone present. Chloe glanced around at the scene, her expression darkening. She slammed the table her fingers gripping the pen so tightly that her knuckles turned white. Fine, Matthew, it won't be long. You'll come crawling back to me like a dog. Chapter 11. News of our divorce instantly became a trending topic. The Wong family contacted me faster than I expected. The moment Daniel raised his hand to strike, I caught his wrist and flung it aside. 
Daniel's face turned pale as he angrily lashed out at me. Afraid of offending the Shen family, he hurled insults at me. I stood on the overpass, watching the traffic of people pass by. My gaze cold as I observed Daniel's fury. Instead of venting on me, you should think about the future of the Wang family. I won't be a sacrificial pawn again. Daniel left in a fit of impotent rage. Even long after he had gone, I remained standing there. As night fell, I sat on the overpass with a few bottles of alcohol, drinking them down one by one. The sky grew completely dark, and it began to rain, an especially cold autumn rain, yet not a single drop touched me. A quiet umbrella was held over my head. The fingers gripping the handle were just as elegant as they had been many years ago. My heart skipped a beat, the alcohol in my throat caught, and I couldn't speak. Chapter 12 I thought Charlotte would never want to see me again. In all the countless scenarios I had imagined for our reunion, I never thought we would sit quietly under an overpass, drinking. The sound of the rain was soft, and neither of us spoke. We drank until midnight, and when my head began to swim, I heard her speak softly, you're not doing well. My fingers trembled around the bottle. Charlotte moved closer, her voice hoarse, why won't you look at me? I had pushed her away with my own hands, and I didn't deserve to expect anything more, but maybe it was the alcohol, or maybe I just missed her too much. Looking at her face, I couldn't bring myself to push her away again. My body stiffened as I watched Charlotte's lips come closer. Her lips were warm. When I regained full consciousness, I found myself in Charlotte's home. The sound of the rain drummed steadily, and the atmosphere inside was filled with a subtle tension. The soft gasps mingled with the rain, and I kept my gaze fixed on the person beneath me, afraid this was all just a dream. The rain outside intensified, her teeth sinking into her lip as she struggled to maintain control. Her low whispers echoed in my ears. Not too fast, Matthew. The words were drowned out by the sudden surge of rain. The downpour outside grew even heavier. This rainy night was destined to last a long time. Chapter 13 When I woke up, I looked around at the mess before me. I almost wanted to run away. Charlotte came out of the kitchen, her eyes filled with sadness. Are you leaving? I froze in place, unsure of how to respond. It's okay, Charlotte said, lowering her gaze. It was just two hours. She turned away. If you want to leave, just go. I stayed and ate breakfast in silence, but I never dared to look at Charlotte. As soon as I met her eyes, I would immediately remember the cruel words I had said to her years ago. I didn't speak, and Charlotte said nothing either. She drove me to the studio and then left again. Before she left, she said softly, I'm preparing dinner tonight. It might be a bit of a hassle, so if you don't want to come, that's okay. I opened my mouth to say something, but before I could, Charlotte had already driven away. I couldn't refuse the Charlotte who had returned, nor did I want to. I thought, even if I could only have a brief moment, I would be content. Chapter 14 Angering Chloe led to swift retaliation. She cut off all my brand collaborations and made it known that within a month, I would be begging for reconciliation. I had expected Chloe to make things difficult for me, but I hadn't anticipated just how tough it would be. Chloe wanted me to bow down. I was blacklisted online, faced rejection at every turn, and roles I had auditioned for were given to others. Even so, my manager Ava had no intention of leaving me. I looked at Ava. It might be tough for a while. Ava said nothing. Just handed me a pile of documents. No matter how tough it gets. Matthew. You won't stop here. Chloe's influence might be vast. But it wasn't all-encompassing. Any role I could get. I would give my best performance. Chloe couldn't keep me down. Chapter 15. Charlotte would always pick me up in the evening for dinner. She never brought up the past. This period of time was so peaceful that it felt like we had returned to the early days of our acquaintance. At night. She liked to gently nibble on my earlobe whispering again and again in the midst of our passion, do you want, to have, me, I looked at her, I suppress my own body, but Charlotte was patient, her fingers slowly tracing downward, on an endless sea, a lone boat surrendered to the wave's control, unable to break free, unable to escape, chapter 16, in the time after our divorce, Chloe never gave Anthony a proper status, Ava showed me a video, the background dim, as if it were in a bar, Anthony, eyes red with frustration, questioned Chloe, you're divorced. Why can't you give me a place by your side? Chloe laughed. And what's your status? This position is already taken. Chloe said, fingering the ring on her hand with absolute certainty. Matthew will come back. I let out a cold laugh. Chloe was still waiting for me to return, so she kept a close watch on my every move. Whenever I got involved with something, she would step in to stir things up. After multiple failed auditions, someone finally couldn't hold back and said, it's not that you don't meet our requirements. It's just that Chloe, Matthew, Maybe you should stop fighting with Chloe, just apologize, and your problems will be solved, right? I laughed, apologize, what did I do wrong? Leaving Chloe is the one thing I have no regrets about. As soon as the words left my mouth, 
There was a loud crack. Something shattered behind me. Curious, I looked back. The door slowly opened. Behind it, Chloe's face, dark with fury, came into view. Her eyes were locked onto me, her smile ice cold. Matthew, what did you just say? Chapter 17 Chloe never imagined that I would actually leave her, so she kept waiting for me to give up and come crawling back to her, but she waited a long time, and I never returned. Chloe gradually felt something slipping out of her control, so she escalated her efforts, trying to trap me within her grasp, but unfortunately for her, the results she wanted never came, that's why she showed up here, wanting to hear directly from me, she hadn't expected to hear this outcome, Chloe was furious, everyone else had the good sense to leave the room, as I turned to go, she grabbed my wrist, she looked up at me, have you had enough of this, I stared at her coldly, without me, the Wong family is in chaos, and you're in such a mess too, Chloe touched my face with pity, Matthew, don't you see, you can't live without me, just beg me, and I, what is that? Chloe's voice suddenly rose sharply, her gaze had fallen on my neck, and her face turned frighteningly dark, I touched my neck, suddenly, I remembered last night, Chloe fixated on the hickey, going mad, her grip on my hand tightened, her voice barely containing her anger, Matthew, what is this? Let go, I shook Chloe off, she stumbled back a few steps and finally calmed down. She swallowed hard and said softly, explain, I'll listen to your explanation. I straightened my clothes and looked at her with a laugh. What kind of relationship do we have that I owe you an explanation? Matthew. Chloe frowned, don't call me that. And as for the Wong family, it has nothing to do with me anymore. Don't use them to threaten me. As for your threats to ruin my career, go ahead. I'll take it all. But Chloe, you can't trap me. With every word I said, Chloe's face grew paler. She stared at me for a long time disbelief clouding her eyes, you didn't divorce me because of Anthony, or out of spite, from the very beginning, you really wanted to leave me, Matthew, after all these years, you never felt anything for me, I looked at her coldly, no, never, I made it very clear from the start, Chloe shook her head, laughing bitterly as she looked at me, speaking each word deliberately, Matthew, I don't believe you, chapter 18, Chloe began to constantly appear around me, every time she showed up, my additions would fall through again and again. She would just stand there, watching me with a calm expression. Ava nearly exploded in anger more than once, but I stopped her. Chloe is vindictive. Don't provoke her on my account. Chloe's appearances became so frequent that I started avoiding Charlotte, not wanting to drag her into this mess. Around this time, I was offered a role as a vicious male supporting character. It was surprising to even get an offer during this period. It wasn't until I saw Anthony, whom I hadn't seen in a long time. Suddenly cast as the male lead in this show that I realized what was happening. Anthony had joined the crew with the intention of making things difficult for me, but he hadn't anticipated that this role wasn't one he could just coast through. A single scene had to be reshot multiple times because of Anthony. The crew was exasperated with his poor acting skills. Frustrated, Anthony directed his anger at me. How can I perform when there's something so irritating around? Coincidentally, I found him irritating too. Just before leaving, I turned back and said, when you've climbed up by relying on others, make sure to hold on tight. A slip could lead to a nasty fall. Anthony was enraged. I could imagine his frustration as Chloe's interest in him waned, leading him to focus his efforts on targeting me. The sunset was beautiful that evening, and I looked up at it. For me right now, having the chance to be in a production was already a rare opportunity. Taking every role seriously, with no regrets toward others or myself, was enough. Chapter 19 I didn't see Charlotte again for a whole month. Afraid of dragging Charlotte into my mess, I had developed the habit of instinctively turning away whenever I saw her. But this time, Charlotte moved quickly and grabbed my wrist before I could slip away. Stop hiding. The air was cold, and her words came out with a chill. Charlotte must have been waiting outside the studio for a long time. Her fingers were icy. She looked up at me, her eyes filled with sadness. I know you're avoiding me because of Chloe. Matthew, if you don't want me around, I won't come looking for you. But, she continued, her smile strained. After all she's done to you, are you really going to choose her? I stood there, stunned, as a sharp pain shot through my chest while looking at Charlotte. Years ago, she stood before me with the same expression, smiling as she said, Yes, I was never the lead. Back then, I was indeed too weak, forced by the Wong family's threats to say cruel things to Charlotte, even going so far as to admit that I had fallen in love with Chloe. I never expected Charlotte to misunderstand things like this now, before I could speak. Charlotte suddenly let go of my hand. She sniffed and forced a light-hearted smile. I understand now. You told me before, I'm not the lead. She nodded, smiling. But even so, Charlotte, I interrupted her, pulling her into a kiss before she could finish. Charlotte's body stiffened.
My voice was hoarse, and my words came out muddled. Charlotte, I love you. I've always loved you. I didn't choose Chloe. I was just afraid of dragging you down. Charlotte's eyelashes fluttered slightly. And now, but now I'm more afraid of you leaving. In the past, I was too cowardly. And because of that, we missed out on so much. This time, I don't want to push the person I love away again. A faint smile curved Charlotte's lips. She hooked her arms around my neck and deepened the kiss. Through the haze, I heard the unfinished words Charlotte had been trying to say. She whispered, but even if I'm not the lead, I still love you. Chapter 20 After that day, the ever-clingy Chloe suddenly stopped appearing. I asked Charlotte, was this your doing? Charlotte looked at me, I know you want to do things on your own, so I haven't interfered during this time, but this time, it wasn't for you. The Wang family has monopolized resources for too long. It's time for the Lin family to take a share. So I gave Chloe a little trouble. Just a heads up. The company's issues should keep her busy for a while. Charlotte didn't like to talk about Chloe. So she quickly changed the subject. Our great actor Matthew. You need to keep working hard. I know you did your best for daylight. So don't be sad. Just keep moving forward. And if you ever get tired. I'll always be right behind you. Charlotte was always like this. Gentle and understanding. It was at that moment that I decided I couldn't be a stain on Charlotte's life. At least, the me of today doesn't measure up to her. In the following months, I threw myself completely into my work. Every role I took, I treated with the utmost seriousness. I wanted to stand beside Charlotte, relying on my own efforts. But later, I found out that the little trouble Charlotte mentioned was a crisis that kept Chloe busy for months. And the reason Charlotte returned this time, was to go after the Shin family. Chapter 21 Anthony's poor acting in his lead role became a trending topic, with people mocking him across social media. Meanwhile, I unexpectedly became popular for my portrayal of the villain, whose malevolence and madness were so compelling that it resonated with the audience. My fan base grew by millions, and Ava was overwhelmed with the number of commercial brand deals coming in. On New Year's Eve, Ava, rarely sentimental, confessed that she had watched me persevere through everything. During the most difficult times, when Chloe made life so hard that even drinking water makes me choke, we had held on, fortunately, we had gritted our teeth and made it through, and now, everything was slowly getting better. Ava admitted that when I announced my divorce during that live stream, she hadn't expected it, but she supported me completely. No matter how tough things got afterward, she never thought about leaving me. I chuckled. Ava then said, don't laugh yet. Explain what's going on with Charlotte. I was stunned. Charlotte and I had been trying to avoid any suspicion, because I was worried that I wasn't worthy of standing by Charlotte's side at the time. I kept thinking I needed to become even better to be worthy of her. But clearly, I couldn't hide anything from Ava. Ava said, as long as you're happy, that's all that matters. But Charlotte isn't just anyone. I've heard that Chloe is still digging around for information about you. Now that you've become better and have a more remarkable partner, I wonder what Chloe's reaction will be when she hears about this. I smiled and told Ava that it was New Year's Eve, so we shouldn't mention unpleasant people. Chapter 22 But Chloe was destined to be the person who ruined everything. She came to find me. On New Year's Eve, I didn't want her to ruin my mood, so I was ready to leave, but she blocked my way again and again. Matthew, it's New Year's Eve. It's been months. How long are you going to keep this up? I stuffed my hands in my pockets and looked at her coldly. I've been waiting for you to come back and apologize. Chloe said, frowning. But you're so stubborn. You just refuse to bow your head and beg me. You've been gone for so long, making decisions on your own. Chloe lowered her gaze to me. I can let it go. Matthew, Chloe sighed, making a concession. As long as you say even one word to soften your stance now, I can forgive everything that's happened. I can give you the resources and brands you want. I just need you to bow your head. Chloe spoke earnestly, but I laughed. I thought that she might have changed over these months, but nothing had. Chloe, there's only one thing I want to say to you now. Chloe leaned in closer. I whispered, get lost. Matthew, Chloe's face darkened instantly. I've come to you personally. What more do you want? Why do you think I'll come back? I asked curiously, from the very beginning. You and the Wong family never treated me like a person. You provided resources to the Wong family, and they provided a person. No one ever asked how I felt. I was nothing more than a commodity in your transaction. Chloe interrupted. That's because I genuinely liked you, and I really wanted to be with you. But you never asked for my choice, never gave me respect. Chloe, your so-called love, like you, is cheap. Chloe opened her mouth to say something, but she was interrupted by Charlotte, who suddenly appeared. Oh. You still have time to be here flirting. Have you handled the company's issues yet? The moment Charlotte spoke, Chloe's irritation shot through the roof. It seemed Charlotte had indeed caused Chloe quite a bit of trouble recently. Chloe narrowed her eyes at Charlotte. What are you doing here? Picking up my husband from work. As soon as she said that, Chloe became suddenly alert. It was New Year's Eve, 
and everyone had gone home. Chloe looked around and then slowly focused her gaze on me. She watched in disbelief as Charlotte walked over, adjusted my collar, and then stood on her tiptoes to give me a light kiss. And then, Chloe lost her mind. Matthew, who is she? She stared at me intently. Matthew, come here. Don't stand next to her. Chloe stood in the darkness, her voice trembling. You chose her. Is it because of Anthony? Because you're mad at me? I've already cut ties with Anthony. He'll never come between us again. Matthew, I adjusted Charlotte's scarf and turned to interrupt Chloe. Chloe, do you remember when I told you I never had feelings for you? Because there's someone I've always liked, really liked. Don't say it. Chloe's lashes fluttered. Matthew, don't say it. I held Charlotte's hand and looked at Chloe. Now, the person I love has come back. Chapter 23. Chloe ended up in the hospital on New Year's Eve. She was so furious with Charlotte that it happened. I wasn't sure what Charlotte said to her because she covered my ears, but it certainly wasn't anything pleasant. Chapter 24. Chloe spent the new year in the hospital. She was in a deep slump for a long time. Ava couldn't hide her smile when she mentioned it. When I saw Anthony again, our roles had completely reversed. I was now the popular male lead. He had become an obscure supporting actor, constantly reprimanded for his poor performance. He was met with cold stares everywhere in the crew. As I walked past him, I smiled. Just like that rainy night when I received his message, and said, I heard you really wanted this lead role, sorry, but I got it through my own acting skills. Anthony gritted his teeth in anger but couldn't do anything to me. Now, Chloe had completely cast him aside, and with his limited abilities, it was hard for him to climb back up. Eventually, his name was gradually forgotten within the industry. Chapter 25 After Chloe was discharged from the hospital, she abandoned her high and mighty demeanor and started sending me all sorts of limited edition gifts. She waited outside with a cake all night, experiencing everything I had once gone through. No one expected Chloe, who had always been so ruthless with her words, to become this humble. Before Chloe became so humble, she had sought out Charlotte, even trying to use past events to drive a wedge between us. At that time, Charlotte had said, Matthew went through a lot while I was gone. I can't bear to blame him. I only blame myself for not being strong enough back then, for not seeing things clearly. Love often feels like a debt. Chloe. Someone as selfish as you might never understand that. Chapter 26. The entrance was piled high with Chloe's gifts. Charlotte quietly looked at the gifts Chloe had sent and asked me, what should we do with these? Before I could answer, she looked away. If you like these gifts and want to keep them, that's fine. I won't mind. I couldn't help but laugh and pulled her into my arms. Charlotte, why do I sense a bit of jealousy here? Charlotte pretended to be gentle, sweet, and understanding. In reality, not a single piece of those gifts, not even the ribbons was left behind. Those who were waiting for me to go back to Chloe never got the outcome they expected. Instead, they got the news of my engagement to Charlotte. The day after the engagement was announced, a heavy rain fell. When Chloe heard the news, she went crazy, speeding through the rain to get to me. Soaked to the skin, she stood at the door and knocked carefully. Matthew, is the news about your engagement true? Matthew, are you mad at me? I went after Anthony just to get your attention. I just wanted you to feel something, anything, for me. I just wanted you to try to love me. I didn't know how to love before. Matthew, can you give me another chance? Chloe poured out her heart, saying so many things, but I didn't hear any of them. By then, I was already too tired to care. Chloe said a lot, but when the door opened, it was Charlotte's face she saw, leaning against the doorframe. Charlotte smiled, her expression sweet yet sharp, still eavesdropping on other people. Ah, but it's too bad. My husband is tired and can't hear you, by the way. Instead of wasting your time drooling over someone else's husband, why don't you go check on your own company? It seems, it might not last much longer. For once, Chloe didn't argue. She looked at Charlotte with red eyes and softly asked, Can I, see him, just once? Before she could finish her sentence, Charlotte mercilessly shut the door in her face. Chapter 27 My wedding with Charlotte was exceptionally grand. Coincidentally, on the same day, the Wong family was on the brink of collapse, and the Shin family went bankrupt. Chloe got into a car accident on her way to the wedding. When Charlotte heard the news, she smiled, her eyes curving. How lucky. Everything good happens on the same day. All day long, Charlotte was in an especially good mood, and by evening, her mood only improved, as she whispered in my ear, her breath warm and teasing. She wrapped a strip of cloth, from who knows where, around my wrist. Her voice was sweet and innocent. Could we, just for tonight, seeing the cloth in her hands, I suddenly had a bad feeling. Lately. Charlotte had been getting more creative with her ideas. Before I could agree, she suddenly deflated. Never mind if you don't want to. It's just that my husband promised on our wedding night, but it's okay if you don't want to. Charlotte, 
always so sweet and understanding, leaned in to kiss me, it's really okay. At times like this, there's no room for disagreement. But in the end, it was Charlotte who ended up being the one tied up. The long night stretched on. She regretted it several times, but she never got the chance to say a complete sentence. 